God's word. We had, I had a good time this morning, and I think the, the church did too. And we talked, and we're going to continue that on tonight. I'm gonna, I know a lot of y'all are tired, and I'm going to take that consideration. I'm not going to hold y'all long. But are we going to continue on the uh, subject of prayer changes things? And I think that's going back to the, that Jeremiah said, going back to the old path, the other cross. I think that's, that's a slogan that we understand as black folks that prayer does change. Amen. It changes things. We know Amen. that's by, through the avenue of prayer, how God's continue to bless us. Yes. But first, I want to just do a couple of things, then we'll step on into the scripture. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, the Apostle Paul wrote these words to Timothy. He said, I thought, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, for all that are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and me, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am a, ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. And I just think through our, through our work, through the word of God, we see that prayer is very essential in our lives. Prayer is a very much weapon, spiritual weapon that we need every second, every moment, every hour of the day that we're talking about this morning. Now, y'all pray. Pray for me and pray with me as I pray. And we're going to delve on to the word. We're going to get on out of here. Kind Father, tonight we just thank you, Father God, for this, this another opportunity to be able to come and to deliver your word. Father God, thank you for this time that we have to be able to worship you in spirit and truth. It's a privilege and an honor. And Father God, hide me in your word. Hide me behind the cross and let your word flow through this old vessel, Father God. This clay pot that you, that you chose. And Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 Bless your word. Bless your word tonight, Father. Amen. Bless your word. In the book of Daniel, chapter 6, I love this. I love this story even as a kid. Just read the book of Daniel and just hear about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel in the lion's den. I think a lot of us learned that when we were coming up in yeah. New Converts, and even before New Converts, Sister Dilson, I think we learned about it in the home from our mothers and fathers. Come on now. Come on now. And we, and we learned about Daniel. But I'm just intrigued about Daniel in the, in the text right here, is that we know the surrounding of this text, if you hadn't read the Bible before. Daniel is a, cap, Daniel is a captive of Judah. And he's in captivity. Now he's up under Darius. And Daniel is, Daniel is, even in captivity, Daniel is experiencing favor from God wherever he go, Tony. So like, you got to give us favor no matter where we're in captivity or suffering or wherever we go. God will give us favor. And Daniel is experiencing now that people are coming against Daniel. And, and, and can I ask this question tonight? Will people come against you because you serve God? How's our character? Because all this stuff that happened to Daniel, Sister, Sister um, Cross, because of Daniel's character, if I'm not mistaken. Because Daniel carries himself, and Daniel serves the glory of God no matter. And, and that's, a tough, that's a tough situation, trying to serve God, and you in captivity. You suffer. You going through something. That's why I say about prayer change things. And Daniel is, let me throw this in there too. Daniel is Past 80 some years old, Brother Crawford, and Daniel still bowing down on his knees Amen. before the Lord. Amen. He's up in age, and he's still bowing before the Lord, giving thanks to the God and being humble before God in the situation that he's going through. Even as, a as, as a captive. And Daniel's in a high position in a Persian kingdom. He's in a high position, and people want to get, get, get him out of the way. 
Because he's, he's about standing for right, for about standing for what, what God, for how, how God wants him to live. Can we say, can we say that? I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just asking the question. Can, do people see that in our life, on our job, in society, in where we go? Do people see that? Do people see that we are praying people? They see that they see our character that we, we are we are a child of God. I believe they do. I believe they do because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, Let your light so shine that men may see good work. I think sometimes we don't think the light be shining and it be shining, Elder Cross. It look a bit, but it shine. But people can tell the difference. And in, in, in the book of Daniel, Daniel knew. In the face of his situation, he knew that a law was signed according to the Medes and the Persians that could not be altered. And as Daniel still knew that the situation that he was facing, Daniel still did not turn his back on prayer to, the, to, to God. Because like we was talking this morning, we seen from the uh, Luke chapter 18 from the widow and the, uh, and the unjust judge, we seen that we need to be we need to be persistent. We need to be patient, and we need to preserve in prayer. And tonight, Daniel is Daniel is the one that not only persistent, he's bold in prayer. Yeah. He's bold in prayer, even though he knew that that law was signed against him and that it would be consequences. Yeah. The Bible said he still went to that woman and prayed. The three times like he normally do in the course of the day and knew it was going to be consequences. Now, Elder, Elder Denson, when we are praying time, do our enemies do I enemy know where to find us when we're praying? Say do. Say do. Do people do people know at a time of a day when you how, how it's how you carry yourself and you and you take make the time out to pray. Do they know when the time that you pray? Because these people had to be watching that Daniel. They had to be watching Daniel closely to know that Daniel prayed three times a day. That's, that's what he prayed. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, even in the course of our day from the text, do we do we pray three times a day? Mm -hmm. But on the basis, on the basis three times a day. We should be praying, just like you said. We should be praying all the time. Our life should be a life of prayer. Because that's what Daniel showed in the, in the text. It showed that we have the life. He's, he, he is, he's trusting in prayer. And not only that, it showed that his, his lifeline between him and God. Even in, the, even in being captive. And through the, through the course of this, when Daniel bowed down and kneeled before God three times a day. He thanked he, and, be, and thanked God before, as he did often. And when these men assembled and they found Daniel there praying, they went to the king and accused Daniel before the king. And said, O oh, king, is not this law to be changed that Daniel, that this Daniel is praying to another God and not thee? Set him up. Set, set him up. But Daniel's smart. Why would I want to, even though the king, Sister Denson, has put a law out that no one that should pray before to him, to Darius, Darius can't do nothing for me in my captivity. Darius can't do nothing for me in my problems and situations. So when Daniel bowed down, Daniel knew the lifeline that God could take care of him even in the midst of all the situation and the circumstance that he was going through. So that's why, that's why he said, that's why he just continued to pray before God and looking at it. And that's how we have to pray today, even in our situation, our circumstance. We got to bow down and continue to pray before God instead of running to everywhere else and let God the one deliver us from our situation. Amen. Come on now. And, 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 and look at it. That's, I, I'm just saying, I'm just using this for example. Daniel, Daniel continued to just look to God for his guidance yes. and his direction. Yes. Because just like I say, when you're in the midst of captivity, when you're in the midst of the things that you're experiencing in life, even right now today, a lot of us experience stuff right now today. Some of us be quiet and won't say nothing, but we did, we did all of the Bible tells us we did it with these different issues and circumstances. 
Be consistent in prayer. Keep prayer alive before the God of heaven. And, no, and, and I just read the scripture over there in Timothy where he said that he would have all to pray for all men, to pray for king, to pray for our president, pray for the ones, the judges, pray for the ones in authority, the police officers, pray for, pray for everyone, just be, pray for the kids in school. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff that we can pray for, and it shows us that we had a responsibility. Pray, prayer is just not, prayer just is not an open line to God. Prayer is a privilege. Not only is it a privilege, it's a duty. Because if you don't pray, guess what? You sin. That's what the Bible says. If it's not of faith, it's of sin. So we have to, it's a lifetime of prayer to pray, to keep that prayer line open. And I'm talking about prayer changing things, brothers and sisters. Prayer changing things. Pray, pray about everything. Everything that we see, pray about it. Pray about the unsaved. Pray about our brothers. When we see our brothers and sisters, and we see our brothers and sisters with their head down and, and, and they not in their and they not in their normal character the way they, they carry themselves. You ain't got to look at it. You know something ain't right. You don't need to be in everybody's business trying to find out nobody's business. Pray for them. Amen. Just like I was saying this morning. We so much, we so good. Remember I was telling you the elders this morning, we so good about being in other people's business, but when it comes to face it down to our out to, to dealing with ourselves, then we got problems. Because everything that we think in our eyesight, we think is right. So when we learn, to, we learn to pray. Pray for others. Pray for the better. Pray for the better benefit of them. Pray for their spirituality. Pray for their. Pray for their health. Pray for the things that are going right in their marriages, in their family, the children, and everything. Pray for them. That's what the power of prayer does. Prayer. Listen, listen. How many of us? How many of us really believe that? We done heard our grandmama, our mother, grandfathers and all. We done heard them tell you. Even though some of them went even to the church of Christ, they say, baby, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. Not, not, just like I asked the congregation this morning, what is your experience in prayer changes things? What is your relationship? What is your relationship in when the prayer changes things? Is your relationship strong with the Lord that you're going to be like Daniel when, when, when things going wrong in your life and it seems like God ain't answering? Are you going to be like that word or are you going to be consistent in, consistent in prayer? Are you going to be like Jacob? Are you going to wrestle with that? You're going to grab hold of that angel in prayer and say, I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. Sister Dessa, sometimes you got to grab hold and you got to just pray and pray, how bad do you want it? Yeah. How, how desirable do you want it? How fervent do you want what you're asking God for? Yeah. God just might want to just see. He might just delay it a little bit just to see how bad you really want it. How you want the healing. How you want the, how you want the desire to change. How do you want to get away the issue? Mental issues. Any kind of circumstance we didn't already experience. He just might want to see how bad we want it. Because as I was saying this morning, Jacob wanted that thing bad because Jacob had done met Esau. And the last time he seen Esau, Esau told him, I'm going to kill you. But through the, through the avenue of prayer, Jacob, God, see, God takes through the avenue of prayer and he works things out and we don't even see it. And, and uh, that's what I like about God. We sing that song, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. They also got a song say he, he he's just then time. He just a time. When Jacob set them play, when Jacob set them groups in groves and sent them out, he sent them out. Now Jacob, one thing about it, now I had to say this to the congregation this morning. Let's don't let's don't get down on Jacob because a lot of us just like Jacob. We got some Jacob in us. Slick, trick. We got come on man, y'all don't get quiet on. We got some Jacob in us. And when, God, when, when Jacob sent them, when Jacob sent them groves out, he sent them out, he told them, present the present when they get Esau. But what I like about God, God had already told Jacob that he was going to take care of him to bring him back to the way that he came. And God didn't know, Jacob didn't know after he done done everything he did. And when he got, when he got to, to Esau, 
if I'm not mistaken, I think he, did, he kneeled two or three times before he got to Esau. He bowed two or three times before he got to Esau. But what Jacob didn't realize was when he got to Esau, Esau reached out and rubbed him and hugged him around his neck and said, I miss him. You see how God be don't work things out? Oh, yeah. But we so much trying to figure out God's business yeah. and we don't know what God done already done. That's why we got to be humble. We got to be patient and persistent in prayer and let God work it out. Let him work it out. Let him work it out in every detail of what we're going through in life. And as we go through the course of the week, this, I told y'all it's going to be the quickest sermon y'all heard. I told you that. I'm going to pick a sermon y'all heard. As we go through the course of this week, keep that in your mind, brother and sister. Please, please, not because of Brother Campbell, because of Brother Campbell. Keep it because God done told you and you done heard it before. Prayer changes things, baby. Amen. It changes things. Be consistent in prayer. Preserve in prayer. Pray like you ain't never prayed before. Because if you ain't never, if you don't know, if you don't see the necessary of it now, when I was coming down that road to Lanes Avenue, let me tell you what, let me tell you, let me share this with you. That rain was coming down so hard, and the water was all over the place, and the truck was up before me, and the water was down there. I was starting to pray, and I said, Sister, Sister Dixon, I said, Lord, it ain't time, is because when the water comes, I mean, when you're in a situation like that, you need to pray. Because we don't know the time nor the time when God will call our number. So when I was telling that, the first thing went to my mind, you know what went to my mind? Thinking about the old school. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. You better get ready and have this in mind. Because we don't know. We don't know. So as we go through the course of the week, Pray. Yes. Pray consistently. Pray often. And pray for everybody. Pray for them. Just, just, just start calling our names and just praying for people. Amen. And let them, because I'm going to say this, and I'm close. Because, Sister Johnson, when we pray, I think we open up a line for God to just flow and work. He gave that privilege to us. And that's our duty to pray. So pray. And let God use you through the avenue of prayer. And remember, prayer changes things. And if you tonight, and you're not a member of the Church of Christ, the church that Jesus gave his life for, and shed his precious blood, you come by hearing, believing, repenting, and confessing, and being baptized for the remission of the sin. And maybe we just need prayer tonight, and we all need prayer. Just like I said, continue to pray. And, and, and pray, pray just like I said, pray for our kids. Pray for our kids. Pray for the, the stress, the things that they're going through in this life this day that they're dealing with. And pray, remember to pray for the unsaved. Pray for them. Pray for the word to have free course. And that we need prayer and continue to pray for one another. Pray together as we stand and sing the song of invitation. I told y'all I'm going to be long. Somebody pray for me. Well, you know they had me on their mind. Took a little time, took a little time and prayed for me.